Hi everyone, kumusta kayo? Mag-uusap na naman tayo about skincare, skincare, and skincare. Now, when it comes to our skin and skincare, one of the biggest issues, lalong-lalo na sa Pilipinas, is still acne. And I feel like marami rin kasi talagang misconceptions when it comes to skincare and treating acne. And even in my own acne journey, before talaga nag-clear yung skin ko, it took me, I think, almost 7 to 8 years of mistakes and misconceptions na nagawa ko that had to be corrected by my dermatologist. So for those na struggle with acne, even up till now, in this video, I will be sharing some experiences para hindi nyo na kailangan pagdaanan yung pinagdaanan ko throughout all my years na nagka-acne ako. And hopefully, this can be helpful for you and your own acne journey. Also, in an effort to properly inform you about acne, this video is proudly in partnership with an acne medication brand, which is Benzac. Na alam nyo naman, Benzac is one of the most accessible brands, if not the most accessible brand in the Philippines kapag naghahanap ka talaga ng benzoyl peroxide treatment for your acne. And you guys have seen me use this acne medication in countless videos kahit hindi in partnership with them. And a lot of you guys in the community even use Benzac as well. So I'm very excited to work with a brand na clinically proven and well-known by dermatologists. But more on this later on. But anyway, with that being said, wala nang any any, let us begin. Alright, so for our first entry in this list, ito talaga guys, napaka-common nito. And this will resonate with you if nasabi mo na ever in your acne journey na wala naman akong pimples, meron lang talaga akong iilang mga tiny bumps on my face. Only to find out na a few weeks or even just a few days later, yung mga tiny bumps mo naging red na galit na galit na pimples na pala. That's our mistake number one which is not knowing the early signs of acne. And very significant to sa acne journey ko guys because akala ko talaga dati yung mga tiny bumps parang minor problem lang siya. Maglalagay lang ako ng exfoliating face wash or exfoliating toner and magiging okay na dapat siya. That's what I thought. Pero in my entire acne journey, talagang nanonotice ko yung parang pattern na a few weeks later after ko makita yung tiny bumps parang yung area na yon magiging full blown breakout na talaga siya it's actually something na never ko na connect and na realize up until pumunta ako sa dermatologist and that's when the dermatologist explained to me na yung mga tiny bumps na yon they're actually a type of acne already in fact meron pang term yung mga dermatologists for this type of acne yung tiny bumps lang which is comedonal acne coming from the word comedones which is yung term na mga dermatologists for yung mga tiny bumps na blackheads or whiteheads sa skin natin. Now for you guys to better understand this, I want to share with you guys yung sinasabi ng mga dermatologists na four main factors of acne. And this has been the same across all the dermatologists na na-consult ko na before with my acne and even mga dermatologists na ini-interview ko dito sa channel ko. So simply put, these are excess oil, skin cell buildup, acne bacteria, and inflammation. So the way our dermatologists explain it is, yung mga comedones natin or yung mga blackheads and whiteheads on our skin is already yung excess oil and yung skin cell buildup na nagkaklog na ng mga pores natin. So, in a way, parang halfway na siya to a red na galit na galit na pimple. And then, yung clog pore na yun, kapag na-infect siya ng acne-causing bacteria na nasa skin natin, that's when it comes inflamed or mamamaga siya and that's when it becomes a red na pimple na galit na galit. So, as my dermatologist explains it, yung tiny bumps mo can be a full-blown acne breakout waiting to happen kapag napabayaan mo siya and hindi mo ginamot with the proper acne medications. And I did tell my derm actually at that time na gumagamit naman ako doc ng mga salicylic acid products diba? which is one of the skincare ingredients talaga na tinatarget yung excess oil natin. So I did ask my derm at that time ano bang mali yung ginagawa ko doc? And that was when it was explained to me by my dermatologist na especially in the Philippines exposed talaga tayo to many factors of acne. Unang-una of course mainit and malagkit talaga sa atin sa Pilipinas. And at that at marami talaga sa atin in the Philippines are genetically predisposed or nasa lahi natin yung acne. So especially daw sa atin, just using an exfoliating salicylic acid cleanser, toner, or serum is not going to be enough to tackle yung mga main factors of acne na hinaharap natin, especially since we face a lot of them in the Philippines as opposed to yung ibang mga countries like let's say mga western countries na iba-iba naman yung mga seasons nila. Which leads me to my mistake number two na usually ginagawa pa rin ng marami sa atin pero ako rin talaga dati ginagawa ko to. And this is focusing too much on skincare. Na sino dito ang kapag nag-breakout sila, ang reaction nila is, oh no, baka nag-breakout ako dahil sa latest product na ginamit ko. And then maghahanap ka na naman ng bagong skincare product, hoping na hindi ka magkaka-breakout from it. Na I know this because ganyan na ganyan din talaga ako dati until my dermatologist corrected me. Na yung parang aha moment dito was nung pinabalikan talaga sa akin ng derm ko yung four causes of acne. Yung sinabi ko sa inyo kanina. Sabi ng derm 
germ ko, okay, yung oiliness, yung acne bacteria, yung skin cell buildup, yung inflammation on your skin. Di ba lahat yan, hindi naman skin care yung gumawa sa skin mo. Di ba, nang galing talaga siya from our body. So, doon ko naisip na parang, oo nga, no, bakit laging yung skin care natin yung sobrang tinuturo natin or yung biniblame natin lagi when the four main causes of acne come from our own skin or our own bodies. And doon talaga na-connect ng dermatologist ko yung mga acne-causing factors such as how much oil our skin produces, yung rate of which nagpapalit and nagbe-build up yung mga skin cells natin on our skin, and even yung likeliness na mai-infect tayo ng acne bacteria, these are all governed by our genetics and hormones. And as it was explained to me by my dermatologist and yung mga dermatologists ko rin from before, the only way we can overcome that, many times, medication na talaga yung kailangan. Which actually leads us to my next mistake, which is not prioritizing acne medications. So one of my biggest misconceptions when it comes to skincare is na malaki yung role ng mga salicylic acid, ng mga niacinamide, even ng mga retinol when it comes to acne. Mali pala yun, according to dermatologists. And after years and years of trying skincare products and then failing and then trying again and then failing so many times, towards the end of my journey ko na narealize na ah, baka nga hindi pala sila talaga yung main na nagda-treat ng acne. And it was my dermatologists from before na naparealize talaga sa akin na nakakatulong lang sila, nakaka-boost sila ng anti-acne routine, pero ang nagda-treat talaga or yung nagbubuhat ng anti-acne effect or ng anti-acne routines are yung acne medications natin. In fact, alam niyo ba that there are actually FDA-approved treatments and medications for acne and approved sila because maraming strong data and strong evidence to prove that it works for those na merong acne. So, hindi ito yung gaya ng ibang mga skincare na parang mag-hope for the best ka na lang na gagaling yung acne mo sa mga products na to. There's actually a lot of people na napagaling na ng na mga FDA-approved treatments and medications na to. Now, some common examples of FDA-approved acne medications that I've used and talked to you guys about already before are number one, yung mga prescription retinoids. So, ito yung mga tretinoin, adapalene, even yung orally tinatake na isotretinoin. Number two, of course, dermatologists can also prescribe mga antibiotics and these are also FDA-approved medications. But of course, this is already a case-to-case -case basis when it comes to acne because maraming iba't ibang mga types of antibiotics depending on yung health history and yung case ng isang patient na merong acne. So again, that highly depends on your dermatologist and their treatment plan. And again, yung mga to, for you to get them, you need a prescription from your dermatologist kasi may specific and safe way na paggamit sa kanila. Hindi sila yung parang basta-basta lang. Now, aside from acne medications na by prescription mo lang makukuha or with a dermatologist mo lang makukuha, right now, meron tayong isang acne medication that you can get over the counter na hindi mo kailangan ng prescription and that is benzoyl peroxide. And again, the most accessible benzoyl peroxide brand na in my experience, nakikita ko talaga siya in almost all the drugstores that I visit in the Philippines is Benzac. Specifically, itong 5% spots treatment nila. So this is my brand of choice when it comes to benzoyl peroxide kasi talaga very easy to get siya and you will see this in a lot of my skincare routine videos. Now, for those who don't know, ang benzoyl peroxide kasi is clinically proven to eliminate up to 94% of acne-causing bacteria on our skin, which again, is one of the main factors of acne breakouts. And not only that, this is also something na hindi masyadong dinidiscuss when it comes to benzoyl peroxide products, but if you look at the label here, it says keratolytic, and that just means na it can help unclog your pores of yung skin cell built up, which again, is another one of yung mga four main causes of acne breakouts. And for emergency spots, pwede mo rin siya gamitin as a spot treatment to help improve it and give you results in 48 hours. And in my entire acne journey, as an entire talaga guys ha, from the time na teenager ako and we had a family dermatologist pero hindi ko siya masyadong nasusundan up to the time na college na ako and I had adult acne, up until now na content creator na ako, my skin cleared up, and napag-uusapan ko to with you guys, never talaga to nawala since the beginning. So if you're looking for that first step sa anti-acne ni routine ninyo na in my case parang naging constant na siya, parang naging long-term relationship na siya, or you just have a pimple and you wanna take action on it as soon as possible, again, ito guys this is very accessible, if not the most accessible benzoyl peroxide sa mga drugstores natin. But if medyo severe or malala na talaga yung acne mo that's when you should consult with your board certified dermatologist para ma-upgrade pa nila yung anti-acne routine mo to give acne medications that can complement benza. And again, for those na interested na gawin to pero wala silang pang 
budget para sa derma or wala talagang derma sa area nila. I always say this sa channel ko, merong free and online option with accredited medical institutions and clinics of the Philippine Dermatological Society. And for those na interested na i-avail to, I'll be putting more information in the description box. Alright, and now moving on to my next acne mistake and my acne journey. Ito naman is something that took time before maintindihan ko talaga siya. And this one is also for those na gumagamit na ng anti-acne medications or nabigyan na ng anti-acne medications ng mga dermatologists nila. Pero feeling nila hindi ito nag-work. Pero 2 to 3 weeks pa lang or 1 month pa lang ang lumilipas. And this is not allowing your anti-acne routine time to work. And looking back sa experience ko sa lahat ng mga naging dermatologists ko na in my life, yung intervals talaga namin or yung time in between follow-up consultations take time. Now yes, kapag bago ka pa lang sa anti-acne routine mo, you kind of have to return after one month to see if okay yung reaction ng skin mo with your acne medications and for your doctor or dermatologist to also assess. And that's because ang acne medications, they really take time to work, guys. As in yung mga tretinoin or adapalinyo, even yung mga oral medications niyo like isotretinoin, in my experience, they really took a while. As in mga 3 to 6 months. And for some people, it can even be 6 to 9 months. And ang explanation ng lahat ng mga naging dermatologists it's gonna be for is kasi binabago pa nila yung pag-work ng skin natin. And that takes a lot of time. Not to mention, ang dami pa sa atin kapag nag-consult na tayo sa derma, medyo malala na talaga yung skin condition natin or yung acne natin. And sometimes or a lot of times, yung mga nagko-consult, marami pa silang underlying acne na papalabas pa lang. So as other derms say it, parang pinapalabas muna ng mga gamot yung mga underlying breakouts na yon before they actually prevent other breakouts or other incoming breakouts from Forming. And for those na medyo natatakot na nagkaka-breakout pa rin sila on their first or second month of acne medications, don't worry guys because it really really happens. The most important thing is, number one, kapag medyo worried kayo na medyo lumalala yung breakouts nyo, consult your dermatologist or go back to your dermatologist as soon as possible. Kaya lagi ko sinasabi na okay na merong dermatologist na nag-guide sa inyo kasi meron kayong matatakbuhan when things worry you. Number two, it's also to keep being consistent in using your acne medications. So, so, ang gawain kasi na marami is nagsa-stop sila and that's the number one thing you should not do. Huwag kayong mag-stop because dun may hinder yung progress ninyo. Now, in my experience, guys, share ko lang sa inyo what actually helps me or parang what actually comforts me on days na medyo may malala akong acne or may biglang lumabas na malaking pimple is actually to use spot treatments. Specifically, kapag meron kang mga bagong pimples, ay nga, nagalit na galit. Kasi when I use spot treatments on my skin, especially for the big pimples, at least I know na parang ina-actionan ko talaga sila agad and that kind of comforts me in my anti-acne journey. So if I do have a pimple na I feel na incoming or kapag meron na talagang lumabas the next day, hindi ko inexpect, there are actually a lot of different spot treatments in the market. Pero if gusto mong tipid ka na, especially with your acne medications, I also like to use my benzoyl peroxide as a spot treatment. Ako kasi guys, my dermatologist allows me to use benzoyl peroxide on wider areas of my face like my cheeks and forehead kasi acne prone ako sa mga areas na yun. But that's actually actually a long-term strategy and that also does take time. But if we're talking about individual spots na bago pa lang and it's an emergency situation, applying benzoyl peroxide really helps to make a difference in the next 48 hours versus kung hindi mo siya nilagyan. So in a way, it doesn't just help the appearance of my acne, pero it also actually helps me morally in a way na parang, okay, meron akong ginagawa for my acne. But again, all of this to say, do what you can to keep being consistent sa routine mo because yun talaga yung key and of course, a little patience. As in, kapit lang talaga guys because the results will come you just have to wait. And again if you feel like something is wrong with your routine this is not a sign na kumalas ka na sa dermatologist mo or kumalas ka na sa routine mo. This is a sign for you to go back to your dermatologist para ma-edit nila yung routine mo. Alright and now moving on to my next mistake and this is actually the mistake na nung na-realize ko to and kinorect ko siya doon na talaga yung breakthrough na sobrang tuloy-tuloy na yung pag-clear ng skin ko. So I hope you guys can listen up to this. This mistake was not following up with my dermatologist. Now, I know this might sound like advice na parang okay, playing safe or sigurista lang, but I want to emphasize to you guys kung gaano ka-underrated yung advice na to and kung gaano niya talaga na impact yung journey ko. So, let me share a story with you guys para mas ma-explain ko to ng mabuti. So, dati-dati kasi around mga 2021, gumagamit ako ng tretinoin na yung pinaka-low percentage lang talaga. And this was something na pinescribe ng derm ko, I think, since 2018 to 2019 pa. And yung thought cut that time is, well, nanonood naman ako ng mga board-certified dermatologists on YouTube. So, it'll probably be the same thing na i-prescribe nila sa akin kahit lumapit ako sa dermatologist ulit. So, 
yun na lang yung ginamit ko. Thinking na nakatipid ako sa consultation fee, di ba? So, when I did that, the first two months, okay, nagkaka-acne pa rin ako. Sabi ko, okay, baka part lang to ng process, baka purging to. But on the three-month mark, nagkaka-acne pa rin ako. So, sabi ko, okay, sige, baka medyo delayed lang yung effect ng ano sa skin ko kasi iba-iba skin natin. So, okay, antay pa tayo ng ilang months, patience lang. And then, fast forward to six months, as in, patapos na yung year, meron pa rin akong acne and lumalala pa rin siya. So, sabi ko, parang frustrated na frustrated na ako. Sabi ko, ano bang mali yung ginagawa ko? Kasi diba, when you think about it, gumagamit naman ako ng tretinoin, which is an acne medication. Ginagamit ko naman yung lowest percentage para hindi masyadong ma-irritate yung skin ko. And then, nung time na yon iniiwasan ko pa nga yung benzoyl peroxide kasi diba, bawal siyang ipagsabay with tretinoin, diba? So, sabi ko, what's wrong? So, finally, sabi ko, okay, give up na ako. Lumapit na ako sa dermatologist talaga. Nag-consult na ulit ako. And when I shared to them yung condition ng skin ko and yung ginagamit kong routine, it turns out, hindi pala tam- na yung anti-acne routine ko for my specific skin condition and yung specific na severity or yung pagkalala ng acne ko. And at that point kasi, lumalaki na yung ibang mga pimples ko. So, ang ginawa ng derm ko, aside from nilakasan niya yung tretinoin ko, binalik din nila yung benzoyl peroxide to my routine. And apparently, ang sabi pa nga niya sa akin, pwede naman na gamitin ko both, pero not together in the same routine. So, she put them in separate routines. So, yung benza ko, nagagamit ko na siya sa umaga, and then yung other prescriptions ko like yung tretinoin sa gabi naman. And no joke guys, after 3 months pa lang, it honestly made all the difference in my skin kasi talaga sobrang nag-improve yung acne ko doon sa updated routine na tinailor fit ng dermatologist ko sa akin. And past the 6 month mark, mas lalo pa siyang nag-clear. So na-amaze talaga ako how just a simple visit to a dermatologist can change your skin. So ang natutunan ko talaga rito is when it comes to acne, yes, we can research all the information that we want sa internet and it could all be factual correct and true. It can even come from yung mga board-certified dermatologists. Pero sometimes, kulang-kulang pa rin yung alam natin na facts or information and mali yung pag-piece together natin ng mga information na to compared sa mga dermatologists who have literally studied and practiced this for years on end. And yung information na kulang-kulang sa atin or yung hindi natin na-piece together ng tama, you'll be very surprised guys. Basic information or basic knowledge lang siya sa mga dermatologists. So instead of trying to figure everything out on your own, tapos stressed ka pa sa acne mo, it's really better na ipaubaya mo na siya sa isang dermatologist so they can give you the right acne medications and the right acne treatment plan. And so that, also on your end, hindi ka na mapapagod trying to think of solutions kapag hindi nag-work yung anti-acne routine mo sa'yo because someone is already doing that and expert and qualified pa sila to do it. Hindi yung naguhula-hula ka lang. And speaking of your anti-acne routine, this is also related to my next mistake in my acne journey na actually nakita ko pa rin ginagawa ng marami ngayon and that is using the wrong maintenance routine. Na actually, dati, I would get so frustrated when it comes to yung mga dark spots and yung mga active ko na acne because, kunyari mawala na yung acne ko, ba? So magpo-focus naman ako on my marks. Pero, bumabalik yung acne. And syempre, kapag nagkaka-acne ako, I'm left with more marks. So parang paulit-ulit siya na process, parang hinahabol mo yung sarili mong skin and it was so frustrating for me. And also dati, I remember na kapag sobrang successful na yung acne medications ko, as in na-clear niya na yung skin ko, what I used to do so long ago, as in nung teenager pa ako na to, is out of fear na baka masana yung skin ko, I would use them less consistently. As in, binabawasan ko yung usage ko until hindi ko na ginagamit yung product. Na fast forward to today na marami na akong mga dermatologists na na-consult personally for my acne routine and also just interviewing them in general for acne. Both of these, yung ginawa ko dati, they're very big misconceptions and no-no sa skincare na laging tinatry i-debunk ng derms when it comes to acne. The reason being, once gumana na yung acne medication mo for you, hindi siya parang ibang gamot na isa-stop mo na siya. You need to keep using it para ma-maintain yung results mo na meron mo na ngayon. So, pag nag-stop ka, babalik lang din yung acne mo. So, that's when I learned na, okay, if I want to use products for dark spots, ia-add ko siya sa routine ko pero hindi ko tatanggalin yung acne medications ko para hindi bumalik yung acne ko. And para moving forward, wala na akong dark spots na iisipin kasi eventually, mawawala na rin yung acne ko. So, wala nang dark spots na mag-perform. And next, for those na natatakot na masana yung skin nila sa acne medications, which was also me before, 
before, this is also something dermatologists say na very big misconception siya. Now, yes, there are some temporary acne medications na binibigay lang ng mga dermatologists for a limited time, like antibiotics for example, and they give it na limited time lang because they want to prevent yung antibiotic resistance. But other acne medications like let's say yung tretinoin, andapalin, and especially benzoyl peroxide, these are all approved by dermatologists to be used long term on your skin. Now, I say especially benzoyl peroxide because benzoyl peroxide is an antimicrobial and any dermatologist will tell you na because of the way benzoyl peroxide works sa skin natin, hindi nagiging resistant yung acne bacteria dito. It will always work to eliminate acne bacteria kapag in mo siya. So don't be scared na masasana yung skin mo and hindi na siya gagana because hindi yun nangyayari guys and that's not how our skin works. Now some people might ask, eh bakit ako dati gumagamit naman ako ng benzoyl peroxide pero after a while nagkaka-breakouts pa rin ako. And dito din pumapasok yung sinasabi ko kanina na just because you have acne medications in your routine does not mean na yun na yung tamang acne medication, na yun yung tamang percentage, and yun na yung tamang combination of anti-acne medications for your specific acne condition and severity of acne. Siguro if anything na masasana yung skin natin, ang makakasanayan lang nila is yung side effect ng acne medications because at first, possible talaga na maka-experience ka ng dryness or irritation as a possible side effect for any acne medication. But eventually, it is possible that your skin can get used to this and kapag nangyari yun, hindi na siya magiging as irritated or dry. Especially if yung routine na gamit mo consists of gentle and nourishing skincare products that complement your acne medication. So for example, itong Benzac Spots treatment natin, some products that complement this well are for example, a gentle cleanser to gently cleanse the skin and keep the skin barrier intact. And also of course, a lightweight moisturizer formulated for oily and acne prone skin to help soothe and nourish the skin before or after using acne medications. So personally ako, before I put on my Benzac, I like to cleanse first with the Cetaphil Gentle Skin Cleanser, which uses sodium cocoyl isothionate to cleanse my skin gently. This also does have niacinamide, pantenol, and pantolactone to keep my skin barrier intact even after I wash it off. Then before I apply my Benzac, my dermatologist did advise me to use a lightweight moisturizer first like the Benzac Microbiome Equalizer. Now, this is just a very easy to blend gel cream that feels comfortable on the skin that has a great blend of moisturizing ingredients like squalane and pantenol. Aside from that, this even does have lactobacillus ferment which is a great soothing ingredient to the skin. And then, you know your routine ko sa umaga, you just have to add your favorite sunscreen or if nighttime routine siya, then you're actually good to go. So hindi naman kailangan sobrang complex ng isang maintenance routine. It can be as simple as three steps pero very effective pa rin sila. Alright, and now moving on to my final mistake and one of the biggest mistakes I've made sa acne journey ko, also one of the most serious, muntik na ako magka-medical disorder because of this and I was only able to correct this around one to two years ago. And this mistake is relying only on lifestyle. Now, let me just make myself clear first, guys. I'm not saying na hindi helpful kapag meron kang 7 to 8 hours of sleep, kapag hindi ka stressed, kapag nilelesen mo yung food mo na sobrang tamis, na nakakataas ng blood sugar. Obviously, your derm will support all of these because these things not only help support your skin or your anti-acne routine, but your overall health. However, it took time for me personally to understand yung sinabi ng dermatologist ko na hindi siya yung end-all be-all ng acne mo. Na kapag hindi mo to nagawa lahat sa lifestyle mo, hopeless ka na and kasalanan mo na hindi gumaling yung acne mo kasi pangit yung lifestyle mo. As in, it really took time for me to realize na, okay, as much as we want yung 7 to 8 hours of sleep, yung healthy na nutrition, hindi tayo stressed, the reality is, life happens, ba? And the reality really is, not everyone kasi guys is privileged enough to say na maganda yung working hours nila or yung school hours nila or even yung working conditions or yung conditions ng education nila na wala silang problema na hinaharap or tinatry isolve sa buhay nila. Kasi sometimes, guys, these are factors that we cannot always control. And even when I started yung YouTube days ko and I started interviewing dermatologists who lean on a lot of research, data, and evidence, they will tell me the same thing na sinasabi ng mga dermatologists ko from before na kinoconsult ko for my acne. And that was, while merong link yung food and acne or yung sleep and acne, yung link na yon is not always necessarily as strong. And that, hindi pa ganun karaming research talaga ang nagpo-prove sa kanya. And technically speaking also, in studies, just because meron silang link to each other does not necessarily mean that one causes the other. It could be also na correlation lang siya, na nagkataon na magkasabay sila. And really took me years to learn that and when I did, parang medyo nung nag-snap out na talaga ako, grabe talaga yung change nito guys sa outlook ko on acne and lifestyle. Kasi talaga nung time na yun guys, medyo malaki 
nakalala siya, that was around 2018 to 2019. Parang ayoko nang kumain ng anything na may carbs or anything na may dairy because I thought mapapalala niya yung acne ko and na masamang food sila. And that really made me have a bad relationship with food in general. And for the longest time, not realizing it, muntik na akong magka-eating disorder. It really wasn't until I was told by my dermatologist and other dermatologists how weak the data is on food and acne and how unreliable it could be kapag binase mo lang sa lifestyle mo yung acne mo. And nung ko talaga na-learn na a more reliable and a more proven route is yung mag-take ka muna ng tamang gamot or acne medications that actually addresses yung causes of acne mo directly and have been proven to work on many people who have suffered from acne. And then, subsequently, a healthy lifestyle will be able to complement yung anti-acne routine mo properly. Now again, I'm not saying na hindi kailangan ng healthy lifestyle basta may gamot. Definitely, a healthy lifestyle will help you maintain healthy skin. And again, it's something that will maintain your general health. And even ako, it's still something na pinupursue ko pa rin hanggang ngayon. As in, I exercise three to four times a week. I change my pillowcase. Mindful pa rin ako sa sweets and eat more fiber in my diet. But all I'm saying, guys, is sometimes yung acne, it's beyond the control of our lifestyle. And many times, we need the help of experts of science and of medications. And so, I do hope na sa mga nanonood ng video na to na medyo stress ngayon sa lifestyle nila causing their acne, give yourself a break, guys, and realize na it's not always your fault. And also, guys, because stress can also trigger acne. So, just remember na you don't have to do this journey all on your own. Maraming mga dermatologists who can treat acne, and there are proven ways and proven medications to address acne and control it for the rest of your life. And I do hope that this was able to help you one way or another in your acne journey. I think it also does help na alalahanin natin na marami tayong acne prone sa Pilipinas. But more importantly, marami na rin gumaling sa acne with the help of dermatologists and acne medications. So for anyone watching this video na on their acne journey right now, whether simula pa lang kayo or nasa gitna na or it's in the worst part of your acne journey or patapos na kayo, I do hope this video was able to help you in one way or another. And if you do want me to talk more about my acne experience, do let me know what you want to know about sa comments. But for now guys, I will leave you some videos here for you to watch na related sa acne and pagiging acne prone. So as usual guys, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye!